So this video, I'm going to show you some settings that I have made just to make my life a little bit more easier playing it on the Nintendo Switch. So let's start with the top with the general settings here. The first one is difficulty. I recommend you have this at one because the bosses do not scale with difficulty level. The difficulty level only affects the quality of the drops as well as the levels of the dinosaurs in the world. So if you have this at 0.2, your dinos are only going to be level 30 and the boss is still going to be required to, you know, for you to have like something like 200, 300 leveled dinos, which is going to be very hard if you only have a level 30 dino. Moving on from here, I haven't touched these settings over here. The XP multiplier is set to 2, taming speed set to 4, going down here, dinosaur harvesting damage or dino harvesting damage set to 5, so dinosaurs can harvest resources a lot quicker. Harvest amount set to 8, so you can get resources a lot quicker. Now the character water and food drain is up to you whether you want to change this or not. I just set it at a little bit lower here, 0.75 for water and 0.8 for food. Dinosaur character food drain is set to two. So this means that when you're trying to tame a dinosaur, it gets hungry quicker, which means you can feed it and tame it faster. So this kind of goes hand in hand with taming speed. Like this kind of doubles the taming speed. So the dinosaurs are going to get hungrier faster. So when it's sleeping, you can feed it a lot quicker to tame it, if that makes sense. Play a character stamina drain, same with the water and the food drain. You don't have to change it if you don't want to. Now, the dinosaur character stamina drain as well, you don't have to change if you don't want to. But uh, as you can see, both of these I have on 0 0.8. The next one here is player harvesting damage set to 3, just so that I can get a little bit more resources using a pickaxe and hatchet and whatnot. Going down here, I do have allow third person camera selected. If you don't have this selected, you won't be able to access third person in the game. And then if I go down here... We have PVE mode selected, a show player icon location on the map selected over here. And as you can see through the settings here, use single player settings is checked on. Disable structure placement collision. This is so that you can build like structures that clip into terrain. So you can have like a foundation that goes into the side of a rock without the game saying, no, that's not allowed. Allow multiple platform floors, yes. Allow unlimited respects, yes. And then if you want creative mode or not, you can select on or off. Doesn't really matter because I just use the console to, to type GCM to get into there. Allow flyer speed leveling, yes. I want uh, speed leveling on, on flyers in case. Yeah, I'd rather have the option than not have it. It's up to you. In advanced settings here, this one gets a little bit more advanced. We don't have any major changes here. Just check at the top here if you have the same check marks as I do. I haven't really changed anything. Um, from here as well, we haven't changed anything. The major stuff starts around here by poop interval. How often you poop. Poop inf interval set to 1. Lay egg interval set to 0 0.5. Mating interval set to 0 0.2. Egg hatch speed set to 5. Baby mature speed set to 3. Baby food consumption speed set to 1. Harvest health set to 10. This actually shows how much harvest you can get from like a rock. So when you harvest a rock, it decides this number here decides whether that a rock has 10 stone or 100 stone, for example. Resources respawn period 0.7 so that it respawns faster. Uh, baby cuddle interval multiplier 0.1. Baby cuddle grace period multiplier just 1. Baby cuddle lose imprint quality speed multiplier 0.1. Baby imprinting stat scale multiplier is 1.3. This is so that when you have imprinted a dino, it will actually be a little bit more stronger than usual because I, I feel like because we're playing on the Switch, it might be a bit harder to have like the control over your dinos and like what they're doing. So rather having them to be stronger is a good counter for that, I think. And since it gets so dark on the Switch, I've set the nighttime speed to 5, so that nighttime is 5 times the speed, so it's not dark for very long. Spoiling time I haven't touched, and these I haven't touched, let's move on. Crop growth speed I set to 5, and then here, um, wild dino stats per level, you can see here I've changed the torpidity to 0 0.7, so this means that it takes less shots to put dinos to sleep, I feel like... In the Switch, it's already hard enough to aim with a console. I don't know if you have, if I'm not used to playing with a controller in, in Arc particularly. So if you're used to a controller, then you don't have to touch any of these. But I just made it so that I don't have to shoot the dinos as much so that it just it's easier to put them to sleep. That's the only one I changed there. Tamed dino stats per level. I have changed health to 0 0.2, weight to 1.2 so that the weight is better, and the damage to 0 0.2 as well. So these have been changed. The same goes for tamed dinos add per level. Health, 0 0.2. Food, I mean, sorry, not food, weight, 1.4. Damage, 0 0.2. 
And then finally, Tamed Dino Stats Affinity, Health 0.5, Weight 1.1, Damage 0.5. Now overall, this makes your dinosaurs have more health and be able to dish out more damage, as well as having a better carry weight. So it just, you know, it just makes life a little bit easier in terms of carry weight, because normally on PC you would have a mod that makes things way less and, and, and add into bigger stacks. In this, we don't really have that, so I'm trying to like fake the effect. Moving on to player stats per level, we have some changes here. So I've actually, now this increases how much a stat increases when you put a level into it. So I have changed stamina to 1.1 so that you get a little bit extra stamina when you when you put a point to stam. But the major thing you wanna change here is for weight. I've actually made it 10. So every time you put a point into weight, you get 100 carry weight instead of just 10 carry weight because I like to carry a lot of stuff. So I've just made this easier for myself to just to have a, a better carry weight so that I can carry a lot more things. I'm just used to it. You can change this how you see fit. If you want to play with default, you can set it to one. If you don't want it to be too overpowered, you can set it to something like four or five or whatnot like that. I've also made speed level up quicker as well as the fortitude. So these ones have been both set to three. And then I believe that is mostly it except for the bottom side over here. So we have floating damage text so that when you attack dinos and you want to see those green numbers of how much damage you're doing, you can obviously check this on here. If you want your defenses to damage other dinos, including your own, like wild ones, you can turn off, uh, you can turn on passive defense hurt riderless dinos. I don't have it on because a lot of the time when like a, a, a dinosaur walks into your fence, they get attacked by the fence and then they get angry and then they start attacking your whole base. So I prefer to leave this off in PVE. And if we go down here, crafting skill bonus is set to two, which is quite good if you're a, a pro player. Supply crate quality set to 10 because I love I love me some good loot. And the same with fishing loot quality set to 10. Now these are quite overpowered, but I, I like it that way. It's up to you whether you collect supply crates or loot drops a lot and fishing as well. So you adjust these accordingly as you want. I like good stuff, so I, I get good stuff. And that's pretty much it. I hope these, these settings help you have a good playthrough and thank you so much for watching this video.